Infectious diseases have existed for many years, and their rapid spread usually kills a large number of people within a population in a short period of time. Unfortunately, as many of you watching this video in 2020 may know, an outbreak of a new coronavirus that began in the Chinese city of Wahun has already killed many, many people. Though measures are being taken to control this virus, other illnesses have unfortunately gone completely out of control in the past. So in this video, I will be talking about 10 surprising illnesses that almost wiped out the human population. How's it going after the facts family? I hope you're doing really well. You look really well. I'm doing well too, thank you for asking. It's your girl Rowan Hedaf and I'm back with another video. Before I get started with this video though, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell so you can always be notified of our videos. So at number 10 is the Antonine Plague with a death toll of 5 million people. Also known as the Plague of Galen, the Antonine Plague was an ancient pandemic that affected Asia Minor, Egypt, Greece, and Italy, and is thought to have been either smallpox or measles, though the true cause is still unknown. This unknown disease was brought back to Rome by soldiers returning from Mesopotamia around 165 AD. Unknowingly, they had spread a disease that would end up killing over 5 million people and decimating the Roman army. Next up on the list is the Black Death, with an estimated death toll of 75 to 200 million people. Thought to have originated in Asia, the plague most likely jumped continents via the fleas living on the rats that so frequently lived abroad merchant ships. Ports being major urban centers at the time were the perfect breeding ground for the rats and fleas, and thus the insidious bacterium flourished, devastating three continents in its wake. At number 8 is the third cholera pandemic, which was the third major outbreak of cholera originating in India in the 19th century that reached far beyond its borders, which researchers at UCLA believe may have started as early as 1830 and lasted until 1863. In Russia, more than 1 million people died of cholera. In 1853, the epidemic in London claimed over 10,000 lives and there were 23,000 deaths for all of Great Britain. British physician John Snow, while working in a poor area of London, tracked causes of cholera and eventually succeeded in identifying contaminated water as the means of transmission for the disease. Nonetheless, this disease was considered to have the highest fatalities of the 19th century epidemic. Next up on the list is the flu pandemic. Originally known as the Asiatic flu or Russian flu as it was called, the strain was thought to be an outbreak of the influenza A virus subtype H2N2. Though recent discoveries have instead found the cause to be the influenza A virus subtype H3N8. The first cases were observed in May 1889 in three separate and distant locations, Bukhara in Central Asia, Athabasca in Northwestern Canada, and Greenland. Rapid population growth of the 19th century, specifically in urban areas, only helped the flu spread. And before long, the outbreak had spread across the entire globe. Though it was the first true epidemic in the era of bacteriology and much was learned from it. In the end, the 1889-1890 flu pandemic claimed the lives of over a million individuals. At number 6 is ironically the 6th cholera pandemic. Like its 5th previous incarnations, the 6th cholera pandemic originated in India where it killed over 800,000 people people before spreading to the Middle East, North Africa, Eastern Europe, and Russia. The sixth cholera pandemic was also the source of the last American outbreak of cholera. American health authorities, having learned from the past, quickly sought to isolate the infected, and in the end, only 11 deaths occurred in the US. By 1923, cholera cases had been cut down dramatically, although it was still a constant in India. Another very deadly pandemic humans had to undergo in historical times is the Plague of Justinian, thought to have killed perhaps half the population of Europe, the Plague of Justinian was an outbreak of the bubonic plague that afflicted the Byzantine Empire and Mediterranean port cities, killing up to 25 million people in its year long reign of terror. Generally regarded as the first recorded incident of the bubonic plague, the Plague of Justinian left its mark on the world, killing up to a quarter of the population of the eastern Mediterranean and devastating the city of Constantinople, where at its height it was killing an estimated 5,000 people per day, and eventually resulted resulting in the deaths of 40% of the city's population. Next up on the list is the Spanish flu, which was an unusually deadly influenza pandemic, the first of the two pandemics involving H1N1 influenza virus. It infected 500 million people around the world, including people on remote Pacific islands and in the Arctic. Probably 50 million and possibly as high as 100 million died, making it one of the deadliest epidemics in human history. Some analyses have shown the virus to be particularly 
deadly because it triggers a cytokine storm, which ravages the stronger immune system of young adults. In contrast, a 2007 analysis of medical journals from the period of the pandemic found that the viral infection was no more aggressive than previous influenza strains. Instead, malnourishment, overcrowded medical camps and hospitals, and poor hygiene promoted bacterial superinfection. So at number 3 is SARS, otherwise known as a severe acute respiratory syndrome. Though the death toll wasn't nearly as high as the other pandemics I've listed above, this very recent syndrome did create a public scare and even caused the World Health Organization to issue a global alert. Between November 2002 and July 2003, an outbreak of SARS in southern China caused an eventual 8,098 cases resulting in 774 deaths reported in 17 different countries, with the majority of cases in China mainland and Hong Kong. No cases of SARS have been reported worldwide since 2004. In late 2017, Chinese scientists traced the virus through the intermediary of civets to cave-dwelling horseshoe bats in Yunnan province. Though thankfully controlled, this virus may have potentially killed many more humans. On the same note of recent viruses, Ebola virus disease, simply known as Ebola, was another disease that once called for a public emergency to be announced. Ebola is a viral fever of humans and other primates caused by Ebola viruses. Signs and symptoms typically start between two days and three weeks after contracting the virus with a fever, sore throat, muscular pain, and headaches. Vomiting, diarrhea, and rash usually follow along with the decreased function of the liver and kidneys. During this time, some people also begin to bleed both internally and externally, and the disease has a high risk of death, killing 25% to 90% of those infected. Between 1976 and 2013, the World Health Organization reported 24 outbreaks involving 2,387 cases with 1,590 deaths. The largest outbreak to date was the epidemic in West Africa, which occurred from December 2013 to January 2016, with 28,646 cases and 11,323 deaths. It was declared no longer an emergency on March 29, 2016. The last disease that I'm going to mention in this video is HIV. First identified in Democratic Republic of the Congo in 1976, HIV has truly proven itself as a global pandemic, killing more than 36 million people since 1981. Currently, there are between 31 and 35 million people living with HIV. The vast majority of those are in Sub-Saharan Africa, where 5% of the population is infected, roughly 21 million people. As awareness has grown, new treatments have been developed that make HIV far more manageable, and many of those infected go on to lead productive lives. Between 2005 and 2012, the annual global deaths from HIV dropped from 2.2 million to 1.6 million. Okay guys, so you've heard about a lot of unfortunate diseases that humans have had to suffer through. It is really unfortunate that these illnesses occur, but it puts into perspective how much we should all value our health and take all necessary precautions to maximize our immunity and overall health. Anyways, now that you've heard me talk a lot, we have decided to include a new segment in some of our videos to respond to your comments. So make sure to always leave a comment on our videos and keep watching the rest of this video to see if your comment was posted. So for this video, I decided to respond to your comments on the video titled 10 Safest Countries to Be In If World War 3 Had Happened. So the first user under the name UK London responded and said, Nowhere on earth is safe, man. I'm going to Mars or the moon. I mean, honestly, with all the events occurring, Occurring in 2020 so far, I don't really blame you. Maybe book me a flight with you? <laughs> the second commenter under the name Seeing Clearly Mission, I like your name, you said, time to apply for dual citizenship. Okay, but if World War III really happened, where would you get a dual citizenship? Would there even be citizenships for any country? I don't know. Let me know in the comment section down below. And for our last commenter under the name Willy Wana, you guys have really creative names. You said, at that point, the moon will be the safest, I think. And honestly, I couldn't agree. Agree anymore. So how about we all just take the same trip to the moon? Willy Wanna, Seeing Clearly Mission, and UK London, let's just all book the same flight and fly to Mars or the moon, anywhere out of this place. <laughs> okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know it was kind of a tough episode to handle, but like I said, I hope that it makes you realize how important your health is and raises awareness for maximizing your health. Before you leave this video though, I'm going to leave you with another video that you have to check out. Trust me. I look forward to seeing you guys in our next episode. Bye!